Welcome to Life as Usual, a video blog dedicated to making you a more impactful leader through the ideas of self-awareness, execution, and direction. Today, I want to talk about expectations and anguish, how one leads into the other. If you always are expecting something, expect to feel the anguish of the expectation. When you spend emotional energy on what things should be, more than likely, it's a waste of time. As a matter of fact, I'll even go further. Expending energy on thinking how things should be is a waste of time. Maybe you're sitting back and you're wondering, how come I deserve this? Or what should happen is that? And maybe somebody at the, maybe somebody at the thing got the thing that didn't happen and the thing happened for you and they should have been this and it could have been that. Frustrating, right? Well, I'm gonna tell you, that's nonsense. You're only causing yourself more emotional toil by thinking about what should have happened. The expectations that you have, the expectations that you're setting yourself for, are more than likely expectations out of ego and feeling entitled. So the more you feel those expectations, the more emotional energy you're gonna have, the more it's going to affect your work. You can't lead with impact if you have the expectation boulder lined up on your shoulders. It's going to lead with anguish and that anguish is going to be taken out on your team. Why is should a bad word? Should is a bad word because should has along with it a huge bundle of expectations. What you should do, what you should do is you should be this or you should do that. Should usually comes from your perspective and your perspective only. Very rarely do I see someone that says should take a holistic view of the situation and the value for everyone else involved. Should is generally a selfish word. And if you eliminate it from your vocabulary, you might find yourself being more empathetic. What makes me feel like I deserve something? What makes you feel like you deserve something is your ego. The word should is tied to your ego. Expectations are generally tied to your ego. And when those things are tied to your ego, you feel like you deserve something because of them. Why does that blind you? Isn't that motivation? Well, let's handle that question in two parts. Does it blind you? Or why does it blind you? Well, it blinds you because when you're focused on the thing that you deserve, you miss out on all the other opportunity that's around it. You have emotional energy. And every time you spend emotional energy on what you deserve, you're not spending it on the work or your team or being understood. In fact, it's just to make you feel better over something that may not even move the needle for you. The second part of this question is motivation. You're motivated. Motivation's great, right? We wanna be motivated, motivate, motivate. Professionals and leaders aren't driven by motivation. If you're more curious about this, check out a video on my channel that speaks to motivation and how it's not the way you should move if you want to be a leader with impact. How can you bring the ideas of self-awareness, execution, and direction into what we just talked about? Self-awareness. Being aware that should is a word that triggers a lot of these feelings. You should be aware that should and deserve and even the word obvious, they're words that make you feel entitled. You should be aware that words are spells and can control how we feel about things. Execution. In order to execute on this, there are two ways of doing this. You can either do it the scary way, which is probably gonna be more effective, or you can do it the chill way. Let's talk about the scary way first. Get a rubber band, put it around your wrist. Every time you say should, slap your wrist. This is going to put a negative reinforcement in your mind to pull that word out of your vocabulary because it's going to associate that word with pain. By doing this, you're pulling those words out of your vocabulary and changing your perception. Direction. Take your time to tell your team that these words are not appreciated in the work that you're doing. You may not be able to get them to do the rubber band test, it's a heavy ask, but 
if you're conscious about using these words in your communications and how you speak to not just each other but the work you're doing, you can find that the team's perception is going to shift and it will help you do more impactful work. So to wrap this up, make sure you're aware of the power of the words you use, make sure you execute with that rubber band, and take it seriously. And make sure that you tell the people around you that these words are persona non grata. Take these words out of the way you communicate and see your team's ideas expand. The takeaway is simple here. Stop expecting things. Save that energy and put it into work that matters. And you'll start finding that your work and the work of people around you will have more impact. If you look in the description box, you'll find a couple of books that help me dive deep into emotional intelligence. They've had exercises, research, and deep dives that help me bring these concepts to you. This isn't a one-way conversation. And in fact, it's not a two-way either. We're part of a community, the Life as Usual community. And as leaders, especially creative leaders, emotional intelligence is something that we all need to get better at. We can reach out to each other through the comments section, through sharing this video, through liking it, and help each other talk about, build upon, and explore these concepts in these videos. Remember, I'm not just a teacher, I'm a student as well. Help me learn your perspective.